The Boy Scouts of America would like to thank you for your interest as a presenter of this film, A Time to Tell. You might feel uncomfortable in presenting this subject to an 11 to 14 year old adolescent male audience for which it is intended. However, it is because of the unique physical and psychological changes young men experience in adolescence that the subject of sexual molestation should be directly addressed. Broaching the subject of sexual molestation is not an easy task. But the problem of sexual abuse is too great a reality in America to be ignored. One in seven men will be sexually molested before the age of 21. The term for a person who prefers children as sexual objects is a pedophile. The term pedophile or child molester is generally used interchangeably. Molesters come from all walks of life. The dirty old man in the trench coat is simply a myth. The abuser may be an adolescent as well as an adult. The child molester is generally known to the child and the child's family. According to a report entitled Child Molesters, a Behavioral Analysis, published by the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children in cooperation with the FBI, pedophiles are frequently the nice guy in the neighborhood who likes to entertain children after school or take them on day or weekend trips. A pedophile knows how to talk to young people and how to listen to them. In fact, he may relate to young people better than adults. He seduces his victims by being attentive, giving them gifts, sometimes treating them better than their own parents do. Sadly, he often targets adolescents who are already victims of emotional loss or physical neglect. He uses his status as an adult and an authority figure to seduce and later control his victim. It is our responsibility as citizens to educate our young people concerning the recognition of potential molestation, the resistance to seductive overtures should they occur, and the confidence to report any suspicious conduct or specific action on the part of an abuser that infringes upon the rights of a young person with regard to their body. Experience indicates that a molester could be anybody. The three R's of protection, recognize, resist, and report, is the Boy Scouts of America's message to the young people of our society. Education concerning this social ill is the first step towards substantially reducing the problem. A Time to Tell is a dramatization of three incidences of attempted molestation. The first situation takes place in Gary's home with an attempted seduction on the part of his stepfather. The second instance involves a longtime friend of Jeff's family. And the third dramatization deals with the situation of an older boy abusing younger boys. The scenes in this film are intended to be specific but not graphic, yet we strongly suggest that you preview the entire film before presenting it to the 11 to 14 year old male audience. Again, thank you for your commitment to educating our young people concerning this serious problem of adolescent sexual abuse in our society. about me. Yeah, I can tell. Hey, whatever happened to your friend? What friend? That high school kid with the red convertible. Man, that was the coolest car, yeah. man. It's, it's a long story. 
Hey, talk about stories. Did you hear Gary's parents were getting a divorce? No. No, what happened? His stepfather started acting weird. What do you mean weird? Well, the way I heard it. Hey, Gary, is the popcorn done yet? The game's already started. Here you go. Oh, thanks. This is fun. Yeah. Just us guys batching it up while your mother's away on a business trip. Oh, come on. The ref is blind. What a game. Can you believe this? You know, Gary, I think we've really been getting to know each other lately. It's been fun. My dad and I used to do a lot of stuff together. Before he died. He left really big shoes to fill. I'm sorry I didn't know him. He sounds like he was a great guy. Yeah, I still miss him a lot. Well, you've really had to be a man since he's been gone. And I think you deserve the little surprise I have for you at halftime. All right, guys. Way to go! Oh, all right. What's the surprise? Well, if I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise. Here we are at halftime. It's halftime. What's my surprise? <laughs> you know, Gary, I said you'd been a man since your father's death, helping your mom and accepting me. Yeah. Well, I remember what it was like to be your age. I wanted to know what it was like to be a real man. You know, sex and that kind of thing. I thought you might be interested in a little sex education, too, so... I rented this videotape. It'll show you everything you wanted to know. We can watch it together so I can answer your questions. How's that? It sounds okay, I guess. Look at that. Looks uh, like fun, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, with your mom going, I know how it makes me feel. <laughs> oh, um, we better not tell your mom about this videotape. <laughs> she, uh, <laughs> she, she would not understand. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> if your mom were here, she'd have me rubbing her back. Would you like me to do it for you? Uh, I, I guess it would be okay. Doesn't that feel good? Oh, it feels good, but... Hey! Stop! No! Why are you doing this? Gary, I'm sorry. I just thought you wanted to feel really good. That's sick! And I trusted you! None of us suspected it. That's right. He tried to pull Gary's pants down. Oh, Mom, I couldn't believe it either. Trying to seduce my son while I was out of town. <laughs> the nerve! Of course. Sure, Gary asked me to let you know what was going on. The attorney said in about two months. Yeah, I, I just filed today. What else could I do? He refused to get help. No. Huh. You're right. I'll never let it happen again. Thank goodness Gary recognized what was happening and knew enough to resist him and get out of there. Uh-huh. He was over at the Hunts when I got home. There's no telling what he would have done. Well, anyway, a lady from social services came out to talk to him. To make sure Gary didn't blame himself, and to make sure he knew it was his stepfather's fault. Yeah, that's exactly what Gary said. He feels better now. 
That's the strangest story. Not really. It happens in a family's a lot, especially if, say, an uncle or a stepfather doesn't think the kid knows anything about how my parents would say it, the birds and the bees. <laughs> it's so much easier to say sex. Yeah. Who told you? My doctor, when I finally asked him, he said, at this age, it's only normal for a young man to start getting curious. <laughs> I didn't have the nerve to tell him I've been thinking about it for a long time. <laughs> how about you? Uh, they talked about it in a class at my old school. My friends told me, but when I talked to my dad, I found out half the things they said weren't true. Hey, how do you know so much about this other stuff? What other stuff? Molesters? Yeah. Because it was this guy I once knew. A friend of the family. He played ball with my dad in school. Hey, David! Hey, uh, uh, Jeff, you remember my buddy Tom and, and Joey? <laughs> sure, you guys are all the time. Yeah, almost. Hey, let's go play this one over here. Okay. Hey, well, Jeff, now which one are you gonna beat me on tonight? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm telling you, now you need to lighten up. I need to win every once in a while. <laughs> hey, how about a couple of sodas, man, to get the juices from? That sounds great to me. All right, well, look. Hey, I'll be right back. Here you go, Bubba. Are you cool, man? Come on, do it again. I miss it. Do it again. All right. All right. Mmm. All right. Come on, Joe. You can do better than that, man. All right. All right. Way to go, man. You mean patting you on the butt like a football player? Not exactly. More like grabbing my butt. Thinking back, I guess I should have stopped it there. Man, I would have told that guy to get lost. But I knew David. He'd been in front of my parents ever since I could remember. Ever wonder why a guy that age would be hanging around a bunch of kids? That should have been my first clue. Something was strange. Hey, man, I told you how to play golf. <laughs> my Uncle Louie. <laughs> hey, David, it's 10 o'clock. We got a split. Yeah, OK. All right. <laughs> Yo, man, I got to go, too. Hey, Jeff, how would you like to make some extra money, huh? <laughs> sure, doing what? Cleaning out my attic next Saturday? <sighs> yeah. Man, it's hot up here. Yeah. Phew. Hey, Jeff. Why don't you take off your shirt, man? Good idea, man. Bet that feels better, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hey, I'm gonna go get us something cold to drink, huh? All right. Here you go. You deserve it, man. No, thanks. I better not. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jeff. It's the only thing I had in the fridge. No problem. At least I can draw you back. Yeah. Feels good. Mm hmm You know? I never realized how many muscles you have, man. You been working out? <laughs> yeah, with all these. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a hot and sweaty job, huh? <laughs> yeah, kind of. Yeah. And hey, we finished up here. Why don't we both get cleaned up a bit and we'll go out for some pizza, huh? Okay. You can sell it first. David? Yeah. What do you need? I thought you might have room for one more. Hey, man, get out of here. That's not for me. Yeah, okay, sure, man. Whatever you say. Man, talk about crazy. Get me out of here. I got something, man. Thanks. Hey, hey, Jeff, maybe that didn't come out right, man. Oh, here. I didn't even get a chance to pay you, huh? Just forget no, it. No, come on, now. Let me make it up to you. But keep this between you and me, huh? Don't, don't tell your folks, all right? Keep it. Just keep it. Oh, so you're going to be that way, huh? Fine. 
You know, it was really your fault, Jeff. Besides, it's your word against mine. Who do you really think they're gonna believe, huh? You, the kid, or me, the adult? You think about it. My fault? Jeff, could you pass the beans, please? Oh, sure. Wonder if they would blame me. After all, he is their friend. Well, you don't seem to be real hungry for a guy who's been working hard all afternoon. <laughs> I guess not. Mom, would you believe me? Susie and I want to make lots of money selling lemonade tomorrow. If he tried it on me, who's next? I mean, for their sakes, somebody should know. Who was that on the phone a while ago? That was Mr. Richardson. The guy who swears he's innocent. If it was so innocent, why did he make such a big deal about keeping he it a secret? Out of court. Oh, the guy's obviously guilty. That's right. It's not my fault. It's his fault. And I'm telling. Jeff? Are you all right? That's right. I'm telling. Telling what? 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 Your dad reported his friend to the police? He sure did. What did they say? You see, um, child molesters can be anybody. And they usually are a friend or relative who uses things like special attention, toys, money, video games, even pets to get kids like you to do things that just aren't right. And it's, it's a gradual process, perhaps beginning with just innocent touching that becomes increasingly personal as time goes on. And then afterwards, they, they try to force you to keep their little secret by using guilt threats. And then he read your rights. Right. But how'd you know? You mean like a criminal? No. There are such things as the rights kids have if someone tries to molest them. You have the right to control your own body. If you ever feel uncomfortable, say someone is touching you a lot or in places where they shouldn't, well, you as a kid can stop it. I mean, even rudely. Run, scream, make a scene, do anything. And then get help. Come in. Can't sleep? Not yet. Jeff, this incident has made us all aware that even though you're getting older, you still need to be careful. I realize that now. I'm really glad you told me what happened. It's a good thing you resisted David. It was terrible. I'm sure it was. But nothing is so bad that you can't tell me about it. Remember that. Thanks, Dad. But what if he hadn't listened? Well, I would have kept telling until somebody listened. A friend, a relative, anybody. Even your mom? Sure. Why not? Well, I just never think of talking to moms about that sort of thing. It's amazing how much they understand. Yeah. How do you know? Uh... Oh, you guys want a Coke? You're not trying to pull something, are you? Shut up. <laughs> Come on. A long walk. This soda really hits the spot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, Bobby. What can I get for you? I'll have a root beer. Here you go. Thank you. What's his problem? He thought he knew me. Oh, is that why he didn't speak? <laughs> That's not what I mean. Hey, Carlos, man, what's happening? Nothing much, just hanging out. Maybe you could use a little excitement. Sure, like what? The club's getting together this afternoon. How would you like to go and meet some of the guys? Uh, far out! Great! Meet me out front after school. Hey, Tony, this is Carlos. Get out Sonia, Bob? He's cool. Give me five. Hey, man. Hey, Bobby. You guys going to the ball game Saturday? Sure. I thought we'd check out the movies afterwards. I'm game. You want to come? Nah, I'm broke. Hey, who needs money? Tony Springs for it all. Yeah! yeah.
Does he like that? Are you kidding? It's a perfect setup. Hey, you guys, you know the rules. I don't pay for any torn or sweaty clothes. If you're gonna wrestle, you have to take them off. Better yet, why don't you all strip and we'll have a real tournament? Just like on TV. Why you're Now here we have it, folks, the greatest free-for-all in championship wrestling, right here in downtown Partyville. Perfect. Now, here comes the defending champion. I'm going to beat your pants off, Carlos, so get him off. Hey, my underwear. What are you doing? Be cool, man. <laughs> so, uh, what happened to you last night? Um, it was getting late. I had to go home. Well, uh, I got some good news. Oh, yeah? The club voted. They decided to let you join. Oh, great. I thought you'd be excited. Well, what happened after I left? Uh, the usual. We wrestled. Everyone ends up naked. And then we watched the video Tony made. No big deal, just a good time. Yeah, it really sounds like it. But there's just one more thing you have to do to become a member. Well, what was that? I had to swear that I wouldn't tell a soul. Only the club members knew what went on. He said if their secret ever got out, they'd all get into big trouble. So what did you do? I didn't know what to do. If I didn't join, they'd call me a chicken. Oh, for sure. I wouldn't have to spoil their fun. I just didn't want any part of it. So why didn't this guy speak to you? Because I decided to talk. At first to my dad. I wish my dad were around to talk to. My dad was around, but he wasn't listening. Yes? Dad, are you busy? Uh, matter of fact, I am. Can it wait? Yeah, sure. Dad? Yes, son? I need to talk to you. For sure. What's on your mind? Well, there's this club, you see. All guys. That I really wanted to belong to for a long time. And finally, last week, they, uh, they asked me to join. <laughs> well, hey. That's great. Congratulations. But, Dad, they do some really weird stuff. You know, that uh, reminds me of the fraternity I belonged to in college. A lot of guys I know think it's great. But it just doesn't feel right. You know what I mean? Sure was a lot of fun. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks for listening. No. <laughs> Um, anytime. Oh, sure, Gladys. Well, let me see. Oh, I can't believe it's the first of the month already. Yeah, the 10th will be fine. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Hi, honey. Mom, you have a minute? Of course. Just let me get the chicken in the oven, okay? Now, what's up? You told your mom? I can't believe it. Yeah, I'll never forget that day. I bet. Did she get hysterical? No, 
She did get my dad's attention, though. And then we went to the police station. Busy place, huh? Yeah. A lot of people think that sexual molestation only happens to girls. But what really happens is that boys may be more reluctant to report. Especially if the molester is a man. They're afraid that others might think that they're homosexuals. I'm not. At least, I don't think I am. I wouldn't worry about it if I were you. This doesn't mean that you or any of the other boys are homosexuals. We've had similar cases. Older boys taking advantage of younger ones. Maybe bigger kids using smaller ones. Usually some type of picture taking may be going on. The peer pressure of belonging to a group makes kids even more vulnerable to being sexually abused. Uh, this is especially true in initiations that may involve sexual activity. Remember, if kids are doing something you don't like, or you know is wrong, you don't want them for your friends. I appreciate you coming in and reporting what happened. It wasn't easy. We will have to deal with Tony, but as far as the other boys on this list, you have my word that none of them will get into trouble. So now what happens? We get a search warrant so we can search the meeting place. But don't you worry, you did the right thing. So, did you guys get into trouble? No, the policeman was right. They did find the videotape, so. What did Tony say? You know, Doctor, I, I don't get it. First the policeman, now you. What are you guys blaming me for? You, you, you act like it's all my fault. Tony, let's run this down. You found a bunch of younger boys. You bought their loyalty with money and gifts. You waited until you could have your secret club meetings. You got the club members high on drugs and booze and then took advantage of them when their defenses were down. And on top of that, you videotaped the whole affair. Whose responsibility is it? But they wanted it. Oh, they wanted to be sexually abused. Yeah, I mean, no, you're putting words in my mouth. And another thing, Tony. You were counting on the other members of the club to keep it all secret. So? So you are the older person. It was you who should have been responsible for them, instead of setting them up for abuse. It was so easy. They just fell for it. Exactly. That is the point. But that doesn't make it my fault. You are wrong, Tony. I wish someone like you had told me that when I was 14. You are wrong. Is that when this all started? Yeah. It's strange, huh? But there was my coach when I was about nine. I don't know why, but this is the first time I've ever told anyone ab about him. No, that's not unusual. Unfortunately, a lot of child molesters were sexually abused as children and start their careers when they reach adolescence. Some career. Well, you've come a long way since our first session. It's still hard for me to accept responsibility for what's happened. Why is that? Because it means admitting to myself that I have a problem. Well, Tony, we're here to help with that problem. Doesn't Bobby understand that by telling, you actually helped him? Maybe someday, Will. <laughs> yeah. Because even Tony recognizes now what was going on. Yeah, you know, I used to think molesters were just dirty old men. They can be anybody. Yeah. You got that right. Hey, you guys want to come see my new telescope? Sure. Yeah. It's really neat. I mean, all of a sudden you can see things you never saw before. Come on. Let's go. Who always wanted a telescope? Last night we saw Jupiter. From far out. What's this for? Oh, well, see, this is for focusing. Hi, boys. Hi, Mom. Uh, hello, Mrs. Turner. Hi. My students are begging for a chance to eyeball your new toy. May I show and tell it tomorrow? Well, sure you can, Mom, but just be careful with it. It's a deal. Say, I saw you boys walking over on Elm Street. Why didn't you pick us up? Well, I honked, but nobody noticed. What were you talking about? Child molesters. Oh, that's pretty heavy stuff. I don't know if I'd recognize one if I saw one. 
Well, that's just it. I mean, a child molester can be anyone. The important thing is to recognize situations that are risky. Say like an adult or an older kid being secretive about sex, making you feel uncomfortable by touching you in places where they shouldn't. So what does a kid do if this happens? They should do whatever they can to resist. Make a scene. Because when a kid resists, most of these guys will back off. That's right. You have the right to resist. You certainly do. And then what? Well, then you have to report it. Even when it's a friend or someone in the family, because they can get help. And if you don't tell, then other kids may get hurt. You're absolutely right. The three R's. I mean the three R's of protection. Recognize, resist, and report. Hey, you're right. The three R's of protection. Sounds like something I need to share with my class. <laughs> Talk about a show and tell. And speaking of telling, Dan, it's important that you know you can tell me anything. I know, Mom. See you later, guys. Bye. No, you're not alone in this world. It sometimes feels that you're the only one. Realize a helping hand is always near. If you need somebody.